the gangster walk step, sometimes called the trigger man or the Memphis angle. Originally, this is the first step of the dance. I'm gonna break it down for you. Remember that G-Walk rhythm, that one, two, three, and four. So right here in space, right here, we're gonna put our focus on the backside of our body and our hips. So we're gonna take that G-Walk rhythm and in space, we're gonna take and simply drop our hips as we step with the left foot. That'll be one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna give you to that again. One, two, three, and four. Using our hips to actually pivot and create a step with that pivot. One, two, three, and four. So that's just the bottom part. Now let me give you the upper body part. So we have a collar throw. So we're gonna take the opposite collar of the, of the foot that we're stepping with. So our left foot, right collar, and we're gonna add that in. So it'll be one, two, three, and four. So I switch right, left, right, left, right. That collar throw, just, fo just follow it through with your hands, all the way through your wrist. So one, two, three, and four. Here's the gangster walk step from a few different angles. I'm gonna give it to you from the back. So I'm here, you know, their rhythm is G, W, A, L, K. Or one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. From the side view, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And that's the gangster walk step. So now we're gonna go into the quarter bounce classic bug jump. This movement is credited towards Wolf of G-Style. And story goes that he was inspired by a natural movement in the church when people call catch the Holy Ghost in Southern churches and they shout. So that movement, sometimes referred when they were shouting, inspired an actual move that he pretty much just, man, just made it, mm, made it something that everybody had to pick up on. So let's get into that quarter bounce, classic book jump. So literally, it's, as we, as we did earlier, we're pacing the knees. One, two, three, four. That's the quarter time. The hips still rocking. One, two, three, four. So we're accenting the knee out. The only thing we wanna add to that now is we wanna add the bucking effect because it's a buck jump. So we wanna bring, lift a little bit up and that should bring our foot off the ground. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the classic buck jump in the most simplest fashion. If you notice, you see my elbows are, are just bucking with it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. However, your hands can pace. One, two, three, four. They can stay folded. It doesn't matter. You have to take this buck jump and make it your own personal thing. The power of the classic buck jump is about allowing you to sync your feelings to the feeling of the music and from there rhythmically express what you're feeling. 
Classic book jump. So this is going to be one of my signature book jumps, uh, and this is basically doing a kickstand. So it's a Dr. Rico kickstand book jump. So we're going to have one, two, three, and four. One and two and three and four and. So when you do a kickstand, it's like the Memphis Jukin version of a ball chain. So instead of stepping it, we tend to like to jump. So I'm hopping all my way back while kicking the other foot out. Kick stand. Kick stand. Same thing. Kick stand. So I double it up for my personal book talk. One and two, three and four. Then I add a recovery, three recovery steps in there. So I have one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a. So that little Quick 16 though, it gives me the speed to get back to the other kickstand. Put it together, one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a one and two and three and four. And of course, the hips are the key. So being able to turn my hips as I'm doing it is a real key to keeping my momentum and flow going. So that's something I just came up with one day playing around with kickstand. So I'll just share that with you as a gift for me to you. One of my personal books of Dr. Rico Kingston. So let's get really technical. Let's first break down a few heel throws. So the first thing you want to do is you want to actually think of placing your ball into the ground and fixing it. If you could nail your ball into the ground, so you're putting a little resistance there. So as your ball is down placed in the ground, you're going to just take and throw the heel forward. Now, by me placing and driving my ball into the ground, it actually creates like a fixed point. So now you can see the control of, as I throw the heel. So this is a heel throw in on the right foot, heel throw in on the left foot, and then the same thing, I'm gonna go out. Just the opposite, throwing the heel out. Heel throw out, heel throw out. Now, we want to always do this involving our hips when we're dancing. So as a drill, you may drill just really trying to feel the heel throw. But after you get through drilling just the foot, you want to make sure you get back into adding your hips to help throw the heels in or hips to throw the heels out. Because this is the natural movement in the dance of having those hip pivots as we've learned in the previous weeks. So let's do a heel throw in on both feet. Both feet and then we're gonna do the heel throw out on both feet, using our hips. So in, 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 out, 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 out. And that's a basic heel throw, in and out. 